welcome back to this discussion on stress corrosion cracking and uh, we have been talking about uh, the factors affecting stress corrosion cracking in that we saw two aspects uh, in reasonable details uh, the tensile loading conditions tensile stresses then we talked about the the environment the nature of the environment how it can affect the stress corrosion cracking. Towards the end of the previous class uh, we discussed about uh, the metallurgy and uh, there are several factors in the metallurgy that that affect that influence the uh, stress corrosion cracking and one of that we saw was on the uh, alloy composition. And um, we just took an illustration of uh, how the nickel can affect the stress corrosion cracking of uh, stainless steels. We also see similar kind of uh, things happening in the copper based alloys as, uh, as it is. Uh, now, the copper pure copper is relatively uh, resistance against uh, stress, cor stress corrosion cracking. By the way, uh, earlier there was a, a, a kind of um, understanding that the pure metals uh, do not undergo SEC. Now, that is uh, metals can also undergo and also suffer SEC. So, earlier uh, you know they were considering that the pure metals are not prone to SEC. It has been shown that cop pure copper, pure aluminum they do suffer stress corrosion cracking, but yes the the susceptibility uh, index you, you call right. I think uh, it is not that severe compared to the alloys. So, you know even the copper system when you add copper uh, uh, you know we talk about copper zinc alloy system you add more zinc as zinc content increases the stress corrosion cracking um, increases. Uh, on the contrary if you take uh, aluminum copper alloy systems especially uh, we talk about uh, 7000 series uh, aluminum alloys addition of copper addition is beneficial. So, it is always useful to understand uh, how the chemical composition of an alloy uh, can uh, can affect the stress corrosion cracking. The other important thing in the, in the metallurgy is the, the crystal structure. We make illustration only uh, related to ferrous system. You take a stainless steel, the stainless steel you know we have seen the classification of stainless steel uh, when we when we uh, talked about the sensitization of stainless steels and you have a BCC they are resistant to SEC whereas, a uh, face centered cubic that is our austenitic grades in the steels are uh, prone to So, when I say SEC you always have to associate with the environment right like a chlorides. So, even in the case of uh, austenitic grade stainless steels chlorides um, in a sea water per se it is not prone to SEC it, it undergoes pitting no doubt, but you lower the pH in austenitic range then I think uh, the chlorides uh, promote SEC or raise the temperature that when the temperature goes beyond 50 60 degrees Celsius the chlorides are prone to SEC and whereas, the ferritic stainless steel is not prone to uh, stress corrosion cracking. And again you can have a duplex stainless steels and uh, you have alpha plus uh, gamma that is your duplex stainless steels also also resistant to resistant to uh, SEC. So, the crystal structure uh, they do play a role um, in, in terms of uh, offering the 
S is resistance. And I will uh, highlight the the importance of the microstructure. I will I will take an example of um, uh, aluminum alloys ok aluminum copper or aluminum zinc magnesium aluminum zinc magnesium copper systems. This aluminum uh, you know alloys are known for uh, one one spe special properties you know and uh, most of the aluminum alloys the strength are derived from where from the precipitation hardening especially the the 2000 series and the 7000 series alloys they are all age hardenable. They are age hardenable alloys right the, 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 you know through the precipitation the strength increases. Uh, you all know that uh, aluminum alloys when you talk about aging we call them as what you call them as under aging peak aging and you also have called as over aging right. The strength of the uh, aluminum alloy increases uh, from the solutionized conditions to under aging. Strength increases the maximum in the peak age condition and subsequent aging treatment what happens? The strength drops down over aging conditions the strength drops down. So, if you if one plots the time of aging versus the strength or hardness do that how do the strength uh, uh, lie the strength goes something like it goes like that and uh, this is your peak aging over aging this is your under aging treatment right. If uh, somebody uh, looks at the this is the strength huh, this curve belongs to this. If I look at the resistance of the alloy to stress corrosion cracking what happens? You will find ok the time to failure. which also is indication of the stress corrosion cracking right. So, at the peak age condition the alloy becomes the most susceptible right and again when you do a over aging the SEC resistance increases. So, when you increase the SEC resistance by over aging you are going to have a drop in the strength level. So, there is uh, you know some compromise on the stay available strength for structural applications. Without going much into details uh, we can say that in the peak age conditions conditions you have what is called as a coherent precipitate. and in the over age conditions we are going to have semi or incoherent precipitates. Again a uh, lot of metallurgy involved about coherency, semi coherence and all ok. So, so, when you have a coherent precipitate that means that you know to put it in simple terms um, when you have when you have a precipitation it is a matrix right it is a matrix you have and you form a precipitate 
if the precipitate the crystals the crystal uh, you know if the crystal structure the lattice parameters is a good match we call as a coherent ok. So, this that kind of I know uh, you know coherency that happens in the in the system leads to more strength you know you guys sort of you know and when you talk about the strengthening mechanisms I think some of you might have read you know how the peakage condition the strength increases say right and because the precipitates are plenty and the space between the precipitates are, are less your coherence is strained it is difficult for the dislocations to move through and so the strength goes up. But same can lead to uh, stress corrosion cracking because uh, of, uh, of the fact that this leads to more of the planar um, you know let us say the, the planar um, uh, you know dislocation formation in the system. The idea here is to show that microstructure plays a role. The same is the case when you talk about martensitic steel when you quench it you form a martensite it is more prone to stress corrosion cracking. When you age it you temper it the stress corrosion cracking resistance increases of course you are going to lose certain amount of strength. So, the microstructure in turn plays a role and uh, that is to be uh, should be considered in designing any alloys. dislocation structure and again not going much in details. Planar slip more stress corrosion cracking cross slip more resistant more resistance to C C take place. Similarly, um, the stacking fault energy decreases S C C tendency increases ok. comes next to the grain size lower the grain size better is SEC resistance. So, fine grains are better. So, these are you know a kind of not in very detail, but a broad outlook about the role of metallurgy um, on the stress corrosion cracking of uh, alloys uh, that we talked about. I want to spend some time on on the mechanism not in detail, but broadly. Um, we can look at the mechanism here. Um, it, I, I think I given a reference to stress corrosion cracking book in the beginning right on the class I think uh, it was edited by me and uh, Tetsu Soji. There are two articles by Stan Lynch and uh, you know he has given nice review article on corrosion mechanism stress corrosion cracking mechanism and also hydrogen embrittlement mechanism ok and those who are interested can go through that in details. Here I am going to be very very brief. The mechanisms that 
there are of course, several mechanisms. Slip assisted active path dissolution ok. The crack is assisted by the slip process. When you deform a material, you will have a slip plane right and you have dislocation on that. When you deform it what happened to the dislocation? The dislocation goes to the surface and form a step right. Now, if I have a film a passive film If I have a passive film, if I apply a tensile load, what happens? An application of tensile load, a tensile stress, dislocation. reaches the surface and then form form a step right this disrupts the the passive film So, passive film on the surface at that level gets disrupted then what happens now? The metal starts dissolving. If I plot the current versus the time you have a, a current normally is equal to passive current density I p you are getting. If the dislocation disrupts the surface current goes up and again it gets repassivated. Now, the Q that you give the Q is is equal to the amount of metal dissolved. So, you can able to correlate to Faraday equation right you can do that you know the current you know the area. So, you know how far the crack would advance in one step repassivates what I what it can happen again this guy again can you can. So, every time the crack growth is assisted by the slip step the tensile load the tensile stress would assist the dislocation movement to the surface and so the crack starts growing. So, this is one model. Now, look at this now if I am going to have a coplanar dislocation what happens? The slip steps
form at the same location the crack growth rate becomes more advanced. What is coplanar dislocation? The dislocations lie on the same plane when you deform it then one after another the dislocation these are surface and form steps. I am not again going to talk about the too much details about the merits and demerits of this particular uh, models this is, is quite extensive. All what you can say here is in this model the crack is expected to do grow continuously not the discontinuous manner ok. You would not see that because every time the metal dissolves it just moves at the atomic levels. The next is called film induced cleavage model. The film induced cleavage model primarily hinges on D alloying. Like you have copper zinc alloy systems, right. The copper uh, zinc D alloy system, what happens? The zinc dissolves and copper gets deposited onto the metal surface. So, you would expect this is the D alloyed layer. Okay, and you apply a tensile stress. Now, the D alloy layer is considered as D alloy layer is considered to be brittle. So, when you stretch this sample when apply tensile stress and if this D alloy layer is brittle when it fractures what happens? On tensile loading the D alloy layer fracture and what happens? The energy is the energy is is deposited on to the growing crack tip. So, what happens now? The crack now see when you when you when you have a when you have a bitter film it fractures and you deposit the energy is so fast even the ductile material will turn into a brittle material right. It depends upon how fast how what is the strain rate. So, to high strain rate the even the so called ductile materials will behave as a brittle material. So, now what happens now the crack advances. But again what happens? D alloying occurs. And again fracture of the D alloy layer. Again what happens? Crack growth. Ok. So, the crack growth here is discontinuous.
So, when you observe the brittle surfaces you when you observe the the metallic surfaces which suffered stress corrosion cracking you normally see the cracks are not continuous it just advances stops advances stops. So, this model explains how you have a discontinuous crack growth happening in the ductile materials because of stress corrosion cracking. So, the the event the precursor event here is a de-alloying enrichment of the noble metal which of course, is, is brittle in nature on tensile loading the fracture because they are brittle and the energy that is released in the fracture process is deposited onto the crack front the crack advances. So, every time the, the sequence repeats and the crack propagates that is why it is called as film induced cleavage model. I think these two models I think is, is good enough for us I think I will stop discussing more on the stress corrosion cracking models if you want more you can refer that particular uh, review article uh, for details. Uh, any, any of you have any questions? Now, let us go to the next important topic of um, how do we control the stress corrosion cracking how do you do that? So, what do you do? Can you give some ideas? We can uh, we can choose the uh, right material that is select right material. Yeah, choose right materials right select appropriate material. Then control of environment. Yes, control of environment. That means, elimination elimination of critical species. What more? Lower the stress levels. We talk about removing the the residual stresses. How people do this one? That is not removing the residual stresses what do you do in steel in steel what do you do hmm? is called as yes subcritical annealing treatment below the detectoid transmission temperature right what else we can do Yeah, of course, I mean in the alloy development you can reduce the grind size all probably will come into alloys uh, this thing. Anything more you can do? You can do feather protection. Add inhibitors right we can also do you said short peening right. Short peening in fact, is practiced that gives the compressive stresses. What more you can do? You can also apply coatings where possible. 
So, that brings us uh, to the end of the discussion on stress corrosion cracking and any questions? In, in aluminum copper system especially in the 7000 series alloys ok, the copper containing 7000 series alloys if you look at the uh, the crack growth rate ok, the, the crack growth rate very significantly get reduced by increasing the copper content ok. Of course, there are I mean quite a bit work on it and people have been you know discussed in detail about that ok. So, I, I, I do not know what I mean this, this is subject by itself uh, we need to see what really happens you know because the you see the copper uh, essentially makes the precipitates also noble actually which are uh, otherwise uh, you know assist the stress corrosion cracking of the aluminum ice ok. So, then we get into mechanism of SEC had an embattlement in aluminum alloy itself ok. So, we have done some quite a bit of work on this alloy in this system and um, you know we can discuss probably offline you know in the more details actually. Hmm. Yeah, any questions?